Hello friends, so my name is Hacy Arellano and I am a teacher with AUHSD and today I am very excited to talk to you um, about Dia de Muertos, which is one of my favorite holidays and traditions. Um, I grew up with, you know, some, you know, creating these altars with my mom and now that I have my own family, I get to do this with my daughter. I didn't really do a lot of, you know, uh, the altars that I'll show you in a little bit um, because the people that had passed away I really wasn't close to um, my grandma though just passed away last year and my daughter was very close to her to her great-grandma so I am very excited to be able to you know show her this amazing uh, tradition that hopefully she will continue also when she has her own family and hopefully put pictures of me on her her um, altar so um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of Dia de Muertos and it actually um, goes back a lot, a lot of years. So Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead, I'm sure you've heard it be referred to as, um, is celebrated throughout Mexico and in actually some South American countries. And we celebrated on November 1st and 2nd, where families, you know, welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives or loved ones for this brief reunion. And it includes food and drinks and celebration. And it really serves as this opportunity to honor and celebrate family members that have passed away. And the roots of the other Muertos actually goes back thousands of years when the Aztecs created rituals to honor the dead. So uh, the Aztecs or the Na and the Nahua people uh, which are living or were living in what is now the, the central uh, parts of Mexico saw death as this really important and ever present part of life. Um, and then during these rituals uh, where they were honoring the dead, family members provided food and water and tools to really help the deceased in this difficult journey. And this is what inspired what we now know is, is uh, Day of the Dead, so Dia de Muertos. And this is a practice where we leave food and other offerings um, to our loved ones or also on their graves and um or we actually uh set out to make these makeshift altars or ofrendas in our homes um so on day of the dead or dia de muertos it is believed that the border between the spirit world and the real world actually dissolves and during this very brief period the souls of the dead awaken and they come back to the living world uh, to feast to drink to dance um, and play music with their loved ones. And in turn, the, the family members, the living family members, uh, treat the deceased as these honored guests um, in their celebrations. And we leave food and, and other offerings at the grave sites or in the ofrendas that are built in their homes. Dia de Muertos tradition actually varies from region to region, um, but ultimately it's, it's a way for us to honor our loved ones that have passed. So let's talk about the actual ofrenda. So I'm sure you've seen pictures of these altars before, and there are different elements that go into the ofrendas or the altares, and which is the four elements, which is water, wind, earth, and fire. And water is uh, typically left uh, so the spirits can quench their thirst, the papel picado, or um, the, the paper banners that you've probably seen represent the wind and the earth is represented by the food um, or the bread, especially the bread. And then candles um, are left um, typically in the form of a cross and they represent the four directions, the so north, south, east, west. Also, as you know, uh, Mexico is a very Catholic um, country, so it also represents um, Catholicism there. In different parts of regions, you find different types of ofrendas. So sometimes you'll find ones that are one level. Um, and you have all the elements there on, on the, the ofrenda. Others you'll find that are three levels and the ones that have three levels represent, you know, heaven, earth, and then the underworld. And then you have other elaborate ofrendas that can go up to like seven levels. That one, I'm not sure what the seven levels are for. Um, traditionally, my family, um, we do the one with the three tiers. And then offering or um, ofrenda is usually a term that, that represents the items that are placed on the altar. But sometimes ofrenda and altar um, are used uh, synonymously. All right, so something else that you're going to see on the ofrenda are these awesome calaveritas. 
um, or, or skulls, little skulls, and typically they're made out of sugar. And so these are placed on the, the altares and um, a lot of times you'll see the name of the deceased person on the calaverita, on the little um, sugar skull. And you definitely can't have an ofrenda without pan de muerto. All right, so pan de muerto is the food that is mostly associated with Dia de Muertos. And again, this varies from region to region, but it's placed on the altar and this is meant for um, the spirits to, to come and visit and um, to replenish, right? To nourish themselves um, during this visit. And traditionally, pan de muerto is decorated with these like little bone-like or skull-like structures um, that represent the skeleton and my family we make hot chocolate or champurrado which is kind of like a thicker version of hot chocolate and we eat the pan de muerto um, after we have dinner so and it's it said that it tastes different because by then the spirit has come and and eaten some of the bread um, I don't know if that's true or not but we love to enjoy pan de muerto after our, our dinner one of my favorite elements of um, the altar or the ofrenda is cempasuchil, so, so flor de muerto, which is used um, in Day of the Dead altars, are marigolds, and um, they grow plentiful at this time of year in Mexico, and the strong scent is said to attract the spirits who come and visit um, their loved ones on this day, and we actually take the petals and we make these little paths um, that are built um, at the entrance of your house and it's said to you know kind of guide the spirits to the ofrenda and it also represents the aztec sun god um tenotiu so if you see the marigolds right the, the sempasuchi they look like little suns so i love the smell and the look of sempasuchi and it's one of my favorite elements of the ofrenda um something else that you might find is copal um, or salt so copal is an incense, and this has been used in Mesoamerica since ancient times. It's still burned in special ceremonies uh, today, and it's often placed uh, near the, the ofrendas, and um, it's a way to, an also, another way to draw spirits. And it's actually believed that this, the rising smoke uh, takes the prayers to the heavens, you know, and the gods. And what it does, it also serves as a purifier of, of the environment, which allows in the spirits of our loved ones to enter our homes without any risk. Um, the salt is also purifier, and it is believed that uh, during the journey of the afterlife, um, the salt prevents um, the spirit, right, the body of the deceased, from breaking down as it travels um, along the, the winding road to eternity. Um, Papel picado is another element in the ofrendas. So this is that uh, like perforated paper. It's very delicate um, and the holes in the paper allow for the souls to pass through. And it's also said that the delicate nature of the paper is very um, symbolic of the uh, fragility of life. And the paper is actually used in Mexico for all sorts of holidays and fiestas. And during Day of the Dead, it's also placed around the edges of the altar, which gives it, you know, color. Another thing, something that I, I haven't personally incorporated in my ofrenda um, are butterflies, uh, specifically monarch butterflies. And they actually also play a role in Dia de Muertos because it's believed that they hold the spirits of our departed. And, um, and the belief actually started because monarchs um, arrive in Mexico you know, for winter each fall on typically November 1st, which of course coincides with the Dia de Muertos. So um, we've never incorporated this, but it's something that I'm thinking of maybe doing this year. Something else that you're going to find is definitely water. So water is a huge element in these ofrendas uh, because, you know, as souls get thirsty during this long journey, they want to probably find and appreciate a nice glass of water when they arrive. Um, and not only is there a thirst quench, but it's believed that the spirit is also refreshed and water symbolizes the element of life. Um, and then you're also going to see other drinks on, on the uh, altar or the ofrenda, coffee, hot chocolate, tequila, beer. So whatever it is that your loved one enjoyed in life, that's typically, typically where you're going to see on the ofrenda. Um, for my grandma, she was a big lover of coffee, so I'm definitely going to be leaving a cup of uh, coffee for, for her to enjoy. Um, and you can't have an ofrenda without candles. 
and you know it's just another way for for our spirits to to find and to be able to guide them to the ofrenda and lastly of course the most important element are the photographs of our loved ones um, so photographs uh, are placed in honor of those who have passed right family members or, or loved ones um, and typically you're gonna find these all over the ofrenda so I you know definitely finding those those um, photographs of loved ones and family members who have passed and I want to thank you so much for letting uh, you all you know, letting me share one of my favorite traditions. So, adios amigos.